In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take a look at basic masking using the new interface and using the changes that they put in place as of June 2024. They've moved some controls around. We'll show you how to find them and how to use them in a basic manner. First of all, what is masking? Well, if you look at the video here, we have these waves crashing against the rocks. I've deliberately put it on track two because masking will allow me to cut a hole in the video as it were on track two and look through that track to anything in a lower numbered track. I like to think of masking as each layer is a piece of paper on a desk. And so I'm cutting a hole in the, the top piece or any piece that's higher up, looking down through the ones below. Now it's a bit counterintuitive in the default stacking order in PowerDirector because the higher numbered track, when you look at your timelines, is physically below the other track. But I'm thinking in terms not of where they are on my interface, but where they are in terms of numbers. So if I cut a hole in two, I'll look at one. If I cut a hole in track four, I'm going to look at all the tracks underneath track four in terms of lower numbers. If you find that counterintuitive, you can change the default stacking order by clicking on the gear in the upper right corner and then clicking on the editing button on the left side and then click on this box, Reverse Timeline Track Order. And that will reverse it if it's more intuitive for you. And you can turn this on and off all you want. I'll cancel because most people are working with the default controls. So what I'd like to do is cut a hole in this so I can see what's below it. Let's do that. I highlight the element that I want to mask. Then I'm going to click on the Edit button. Now, I used to have masking in the controls on the left side. It's gone. Where did it go? They actually put it at the top between the word video and the word animation. So I'm going to click on the mask button. When I click on the button, I see my simple basic masking. Now this works a little bit like the title controls. I have the simple tools here and then I click here to get the advanced tools. We won't work with those in this particular tutorial. So let's apply a mask. The only thing I need to do is click on one of these masks here. These are default because they're gray on black. Let's take a circle. I click on that and it did a mask. Now what it does by default is it says I'm going to leave the circle as what's left on track two and everything outside the circle will look down into track one. So that's why the circle right now shows only what's on track two. And track one is black. Why is it black? Well, if your mask is on track one, there's no tracks below it, it will be black. If your mask is on track two and there is nothing below it, or track 18 or 20, doesn't matter, there's nothing below it in that moment in time on your timeline, it will be portrayed as black. That's the default. I wanted to make what was beneath it in this case, orange, all I would have to do is take a color board of orange and put it on track number one. The other thing you need to note is that it, you say, well, sometimes I, don't, I don't, don't want it to mask everything but the circle. I want to mask only the circle, like I cut a circular hole in track number two. That's what the invert mask button is for in the lower left corner. You turn that on. And now the hole, as it were, that I'm looking through is the circle. And you can change it. You can move it around with a mouse or you can use the controls on the left panel. You can rotate it from the left panel or you can rotate it here. It's a circle. It wouldn't look rotated. You can change the horizontal and vertical. I can turn this into an ellipse and then I can rotate it. You can see it moving around. I can actually make it much bigger than the screen if I wanted to. And I can drag one of the corners if I get the, the right. And so that could be what it looks like. So your mask can be much larger than the screen and sometimes you may want it that. Uh, so you can modify it in any one of a number of different ways in terms of size, rotation, and location on the screen. Now if I want to remove a mask, I click on the circle with a line through it and that will take the mask away. So that's the way it starts with no masks. Let's see what it looks like with something underneath it besides black nothing. So I'm going to 
close the controls, and I'll take this video and drag it to track one. Going to go back to track two. You have to remember what track do I put my mask on? The higher numbered track. And I'm going to go back into edit. We'll make sure on our mask controls. And let's take this brush area here. Click on that. Now I have the brush. Last time I used it, it was rotated, so it remembered. And I'm going to make it a little bigger here. So now if I play this segment where we have it, where our mask is cutting through, I have it inverted. So it's the brush shape, not everything else. And we're looking at what's in track number one. So that's the basics of using a mask. Now let me show you just a little bit about, well, I want to make my own mask or use a, uh, an image I have that's my own. The way you do that is you click on the icon here, Create Image Mask. You're really not creating one. You're taking it, something you've created and using it. So I'm going to click here. It'll take you to your file system. And what I want to do is navigate to where my stuff is. I'm going to click on Images here. And here I have some ink blots. I'm going to click on this one and click on Open. Now there is my mask, but it looks like it's a mess. Because in, in every good mask, you have black and white. Black is the area that cuts the hole through. White is the area that remains. So why do I have, this is a good mask here, this ink blot. But I also have areas here that I don't want. Let me click on Invert. All right, now I have what I like, but it's not the right size. Well, all I need to do is change the size of my mask, something like this. And I can move it around, and you can keep resizing it or moving it all you want. And there is my mask with track two and all these weird uh, hole cuts in it to track number one. So if I play this here, well, let's see if it looks halfway good. That's a rather interesting catch. So now I have an ink blot mask that I can use there. And when we run out of video, we're back to black. That's a little bit of a tip. Now, when you use the advanced controls, you can actually move your mask. You can keyframe the location of it, but that's beyond this tutorial. So if you want to do some simple masking, let's turn this one off again. And let's go back to something like a heart. And now my heart, is got a larger size than I want. We'll shrink it down and then we'll invert it. And now I have the heart as the hole I have cut out and done some simple masking. So that's a basic look at the very simple parts of masking. We'll have another tutorial showing you more of the, of the advanced use. We've used masking often in tutorials here in CyberLink Power Director from the Sharper Turtle and we hope that You'll find this to be helpful now that you know where the new controls are and some basic ways to begin to use them.